Welcome to the channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today's review will be on the San Martin Submariner SN017G. Please use this time to hit the subscribe button and click the notifications bell so you are up to date with the latest reviews. Remember to also check the description which will contain the relevant links to the watches that are being reviewed. Any AliExpress links are affiliated and you won't pay any extra for using them. You will also find my email address and the link to my eBay store within that description. You can find a lot of the watches that I have reviewed on my eBay store and you'll also find a few modified watches that I make myself. I hope you enjoyed the review and don't forget to leave a comment. So we are on the San Martin store on AliExpress. I am assuming most of you are aware uh, of this store and have been on AliExpress so you should be familiar with what you're seeing here. I just want to take you through the different color options available. So currently the watch is reselling for 158 uh, with a few variants at 171. You'll notice uh, this is the upgrade version, version 3. The one I will be reviewing will be the version 2. And I have the version 3 on order, it's en route. And I will be releasing a video once I've looked at that. The only noticeable change between the version 2 and 3 is the hexagon logo uh, with San Martin written in the center. Uh, and I believe that was a request from a lot of the customers who wanted to see this watch with said logo. You can see a few of the pictures here. You've got green, black and a purpley blue. You've also got the great wave of Kanagawa style dial. Uh, we are seeing this dial in a lot more uh, Chinese homages. Uh, there's a lot of people using them to mods. I think the loom on it is, is quite good. The pattern on it is great as well. Uh, very popular dial. And you can see San Martin has gone for that. A few close up of some of the details on the watch. So they've, you know, they're selling it pretty well. Uh, and they're selling it as a really well made watch. So that is the whole point of the review to see how it does actually compare with the description. Um, you know, there's a hype around San Martin being one of the best uh, watch makers. Uh, that's mainly because they, they have the factory Logu. Uh, Logu is the actual name of the factory and uh, San Martin is a brand of theirs. So it gives them access to all the designs that other uh, brands are making. They can effectively copy it, they can improve it, they can do what they like, they can change the machine techniques um, and it's all from them. So it should, it should be a better version really. You can just see it's had nearly 500 orders, currently 4.8 stars, so a very high rating. Um, a lot of people are really pleased with it. So okay, let's go into the review and let's see what this watch is really about. Thank you for joining me. I have in front of me the San Martin Submariner. We're going to cut through all the normal chit chat uh, as I've covered it in the intros and we're going to go straight in to the actual review. Unboxing the box it contains this really well made. Um, I was actually quite impressed with this. Uh, it's a very high quality screwdriver. Um, I love tools. Anybody who mods watches will surely appreciate this. Um, this is just for the screw down end links, so we'll be needing that. Put that to the side. You also get a San Martin warranty card, dated uh, and stamped, to show it's been through some form of QC. And you've got the user manual and warranty conditions. You also get this nice little San Martin tag, uh, which says. AliExpress and the case you've seen this case on a few different watches um, it isn't the nicest looking cases however it is very functional very robust um, and I actually prefer these kind of cases because it's coming from China your watch 9 out of 10 times will be very safe so the watch is sent over on this little strip of foam here uh, it's obviously wrapped I've already took all the wrapping off First impressions initially, um, right, I'm not a big fan of Submariners. Um, I think it's just because they're played out by everybody. Um, even though I did review the Pagani Submariner, uh, I think near enough when it was first released. Um, and it is one of the highest rating videos to date. However, 
just personally for me, I think they just played out. Um, and what I mean by that, it's just too too many Submariners around. You always see it. Um, and not to say it's a bad watch, I just don't like that case, shape and design. Having said that, as soon as I opened the box, there was an instant um, wow factor from me. Instantly I thought, wow, this, this looks really nice. Um, the finishing does stand out of the watch. You can just have a close up, have a look. So they have really, at the box, they have done quite well. I mean, uh, the reviews, um, it's had 500 plus orders. You've got a 4.8 customer satisfaction rating. Obviously, out of those 500, not all 500 have put a rating in. Um, so it shows that, generally speaking, this watch is well received um, and well liked. So first impressions were really positive. So then that makes you go in deeper. So that's for me. I mean, initially, if a watch is kind of cheap, you don't really pay too much attention to it. Now, this isn't expensive, nor is it cheap. I think it's at a decent price range. Between the £150 mark, um, the price is very value for money still. It's just excellent. Um, and for that, I do believe you get a very high quality watch compared to a lot of the other watches out there. So we're going to go into the nitty gritty. Um, we're going to see how good it really is. Because for me, if a watch has tried that hard, it just makes me focus more uh, and see what they could really improve. I've checked a couple of the reviews out um, of this watch already. Generally, everyone is loving them. And there's not, uh, there's no really criticism of this out there. Uh, and then I've read a few comments as well, which has led some people to think, you know, as even including myself, a lot of us are affiliated with AliExpress. You know, is it in our best interest to just rate every single watch? I've had this problem on a few channels that I've looked at where you don't really know how good a watch is because everything they seem to say is 100% positive. Now, I don't think that's the case. Um, I don't think any watch is 100%. So there's always room for improvement, obviously, due to people's different tastes. Um, so I'm going to try my best just to give a really honest review um, and see if I can, you know, go deep enough to find any issues with this. And if it is the doggy bees, as everyone thinks it is. That being said, enough rambling and, you know, let's focus in. Let's focus out first. Let me just cover specifications. I've realized I haven't done the dimensions or the specs. So dimensionally, uh, you've got a... Diameter of 40.5 millimeter. Instantly, when I took that at the box and I realized it was a 40 mil diameter K watch, I liked it that much more. Uh, and the log to log is 48 mil. Again, another perfect number, the Goldilocks zone. Uh, I do like that log to log. I've mentioned so many times that I prefer watches to be under 50 mil because my wrist size is uh, six and a half. On the note, I'm wearing the SKX 007 for today. The thickness on this website is recorded as 14 mil. Uh, however, using my my own uh, digital caliper, uh, it's coming in at 13 mil. I didn't um, obviously incorporate that uh, magnification window. Um, and if anything, to be slightly more accurate, it comes in at 12.8. Now, dimensionally, you might ask the question, I wonder how that compares to the Rolex. The Rolex dimensions are very, very similar. The Rolex Submariner comes in at 40.5 in diameter. It's got a 12.7 mil thick case uh, and it's got a log to log of 50 mil. So for me already, this has, when I say better, better for me because it's a 48 mil log to log. Now by in no way, shape or form, am I comparing this to a Rolex Submariner? That would be silly. I'm just talking about dimensionally. Specifications, you've got an NH35 Seiko Epson movement, 24 joule movement with hand winding, hacking, it beats at 21600 vibrations or beats per hour, which relates to a six ticks a second sweep that you're going to see. You've got a sapphire crystal, you've got a magnification window at the three o'clock on the crystal. Uh, and you've got a full stainless steel construction with a ceramic bezel insert. So specifications are pretty standard right now. Um, we don't expect anything less. In fact, Pagani will give you all that for around the 60 to 70 pound mark, depending on whether or not you got the watch in the sales or whatever. Okay. So let's go back to the dial. You've got a sunburst green dial. 
with a printed minute track and printed text, San Martin logo at the 12 o'clock position and automatic 200 meters at the 6 p.m. You have a date window at the 3 p.m. with Mercedes hands, uh, which are highly polished and well machined. You've got Submariner style applied indices with a silver ring or edge around the indices. Uh, you've got no chapter ring and you've got BGW9 on the dial and hands. So what do I think about the dial now? Having seen it as it is, I'd say the dial, there's nothing special about the dial. Um, these dials, you'll see them, maybe Pagani use the same style of dial. You'll see them in the Bleagers, you'll see them in all the lower end, the really budget uh, type watches. For me, the biggest problem is, is the style of font. I don't personally have a problem with the name San Martin across the dial. I know that's very subjective, but I just think this is such a dead font. I call it the Taxman font. Um, you know, they should have used just anything different. Um, the fact that it's printed and this watch is meant to be emulating such a high-end watch, they could have gone a little further uh, and not even by much. If you look at some of the other watches on the San Martin website, you've got the bronze 62 mass uh, and you've got a few uh, of the bronze variants uh, divers. Um, they, they use a slightly different style of font. It is slightly stylized uh, and what's more is that it's applied. So it's stamped out aluminium or steel or whatever. Uh, and it's applied to the dial so it gives a 3D effect to it um, and it looks 10 times better so I think because I've got the version 3 coming uh, looking at pictures I don't think this watch will suit that hexagonal logo, logo. Um, but you know you get used to everything um, and that's my you know first issue with the dial I think they could have done better uh, but they just printed a bog, -o, bog standard font which um, I think has probably led people to go off with a different logo. The fit is fine. Uh, it doesn't look misaligned at all. Uh, one thing I will say, I don't know if you saw the intro video. Now, under uh, bright light, you can see uh, a lot of Raj grouping of just dust particles around here. And that was visible uh, under the sun, albeit it was very close, um, like a macro level. Now, let's move on to... The sapphire crystal, um, you do have, it's a full on sapphire crystal, flat uh, and the fit and finish is really good. It does sit in uh, line and flush with the bezel insert. It's not protruding, um, so there's no issues on that. You've got the date magnification window uh, with minimal distortion. I think the best date mag window I've seen is been on uh, maybe a Seiko uh, Mini Turtle. There was hardly any distortion on there, very clear to see through. Um, but you have got minimal. I think on some of the others, uh, the lower end ones, it is quite distorted. Uh, and you need to kind of squint to see it. A lot of them take them off. Um, you know, personally I don't. You, know, you can take it off if you want. Moving on to the bezel. Now this is one of the things they upgraded. Um, and it will point you straight to it. So that's the 12 o'clock loom pip. Now, everyone prefers the pips to be subset within the bezel. Um, and I think more and more um, watch producers out of China are starting to do that. Uh, I think they've done a really good job with this, where it doesn't even look subset as much as it looks like it's actually part of the bezel. The bezel was made with this in there. It reminds me of those... Um, those little pips that you've got to press on these new cigarettes are out, um, you know, with the dual flavors or whatever. The rest of the insert, pretty basic insert. Um, you can buy these on eBay. Uh, a lot of modders use them. It's a decent shade of green. It isn't too bright. And it's ceramic and sloped. So it looks okay. It does go with the watch. So moving on from that, Let's look at the bezel. Let's have a touch and feel of the actual bezel. This is one of the most important parts of a dive watch, obviously. So I'd say straight away, very tight. Um, and it's one of the first things which uh, I did notice. And I think why I like the watch so much is just one second. I'll give it a quick little wipe. 
it really complements the profile of the watch uh, and the profile of the case i like the fact that it's so low profile um, it's not a thick fat bezel that is gonna uh, make the watch coming in at you know 18 millimeters thick um, and they have really tried hard to make this bezel as good as they can um, i'd say they've done a very good job very tight there's hardly any back play in it uh, and they've got these really nice machined um, scallops as per the submariner in the intro you can see some really nice macros um, and you can see right here really well done great finish to them let's look a bit closer um, on the case so you've got obviously this is a submariner style case and you've got linear brushing on the A-face of the case and onto the lugs and you can see it is quite a fine brushing so that's been done well and on the sides you've got polished polished sides but I prefer watches to be brushed you know uh, it's less of a fingerprint magnet obviously uh, and secondly uh, it's not it doesn't show up all the really hairline scratches that you get through just normal day-to-day -day use of the watch. Case back is your Rolex style. Screw down. Case back, of course, brushed as well. Now, the only thing I've noticed on this case so far is, look at the ends of the case. Um, damn, that's like Wolverine's claws. So the ends are really sharp. Um, on the wrist, you can't feel it, thankfully, but I'd say the lug ends, um, the case ends are quite sharp. The crown, the crown has, uh, it's a nice crown, sticks out nicely. Um, it's got a good grip to it. It's been machined well. Um, I'd say just the splines on the crown could do with just a touch more refinement just to smooth them off just slightly um, if you've got rough hands you'll be okay but if you haven't you will definitely feel that um, and screw down no issue on the screw down very smooth all as well with the case that brings us to obviously the bracelet now I think most of the comments um, around the watch center around the bracelet uh it's supposed to be a very fantastic bracelet and on the on the on the just looking at it from from the outside um it's a very good bracelet it is one of the best bracelets if not the best bracelets used on um these you know chinese watches so just to give you some details around that you've got solid end links and you can see just the fit and finish of these end links is super you know they sit very flush there's not much between them at all between the lugs and the actual end links fully brushed now i think this may have an improvement from the version one uh, where i do believe i could be wrong where the center links were polished but as mentioned i do prefer a brushed bracelet the bracelet also tapers down from a 20 mil down to a 16 mil at the clasp you can just see underneath solid very well made and you've also got a couple of features where if you look at the sides as well it's been brushed along the sides so they have paid you know a lot of attention um to the actual watch especially the bracelet and you've got this tudor style safety clasp you open that mill scissor side clasp and you've got five, six micro adjustments here. Uh, and this is definitely an upgrade to the standard mirror clasps that are quite flat. Um, this is obviously the opposite. You've got these machined edges. Very well done, brushed. Um, and I'd say the clasp is, it is the best clasp, you know, coming out of China right now, unless you start going into the actual Rolex replica clasps with the glide locks. Um, but for what it is, it's absolutely perfect. 
you really can't get any or would you want anything better when i sized this for the wrist shot um i did notice straight away this has one of the smoothest screw down um end links so some of the smoothest screw action that i've actually felt buttery smooth goes in comes out without an issue doesn't get stuck the threads are, are really well made very well machined This brings me to just one one point that I've got to make on the bracelet. Um, because they've tried so hard to make it so good, um, they've just missed out on a spot of finishing here. Um, they could have just done one more thing just to complete the bracelet. When you have it in your hands and you're just holding it and even when you wear it on the wrist, um, I noticed that you, st you do feel a bit of sharpness. Um, and you know, if you've got a bit of hair on your arm as well, like I have, you definitely feel it then. So you've got just between the lugs here, the edges, uh, as you notice, the way it has been brushed or it's been manufactured, just straight, very straight edges. So a straight edge is always going to give you that bit of sharpness and you can definitely feel it here. The more you rub your hands around the actual bracelet, um, what you actually need is these edges to be taken off. I'll give you an example. So let's look at a Seiko here. Now, you know, the price point and all that aside, the bracelets, the edges are very smooth, even though they're straight, but you can see they've polished off and smoothed off the edges. That obviously is what makes, you know, a good bracelet as well. Whether or not you think this is a good bracelet for the watch, that's regardless. Um, that's not the point here I'm trying to make, but They've just missed out on the finishing. Spec wise, look, fit, finish, it is a fantastic bracelet, very good bracelet for the watch. Um, but I will say that, you know, they could have done just that little bit more. Um, so if that's all for the review. I know there's two things missing. I will give you a loom shot and a wrist shot before I do my conclusion. So I'll just give you, um, I'll just show you that now. So just have a look at this loom, uh, full BGW9 on the dial, hands, and the pip at the 12 o'clock position. I've not used any UV lamp on this. This is just pure daylight uh, coming in through the window where I sit. You can see really good quality. Um, all even, no patchy spots. So that for loom, it will last you a fair bit. And it looks quite pretty. It's a change from the normal green C2 that you look at. So, very good loom on the San Martin. For reference purposes, my wrist size is 6.5 inches. This bracelet has been sized for my wrist. Um, it's a very good fit on the wrist. Dimensions make it sit even better on a smaller wrist. I think they've got it right with the 48mm log to log and the 40mm diameter. Um, and it looks pretty impressive. Um, the green shines when it hits that sunlight as you can see ceramic is shiny um, and the whole watch they've done a very good job off the watch I have to say time for a quick conclusion uh, just to wrap it all up um, so what do I think I think uh, this is one of the best sub baroner homages made there's no doubt about that um, obviously it, it doesn't compare to a Pagani um, it's way better than a Pagani However, the Pagani gives you just too much for the price range. Um, so if it comes down to price, mm, I don't know. Personally, I'll, I would still go for this because it's that, it's just, you know, uh, that step up. It's got superior finishing. It's got a much better bracelet uh, and the dimensions a lot closer. Uh, it just looks a lot sleeker as well. And that's for me. I don't even like these cases. And I'm saying that. Um, how does it compare to, let's say, the Heimdaller? Now, the Heimdaller, I think on the surface of it is... Uh, the case I'm assuming is the same. Uh, the reason I say that is I do sell Heim dollar stuff and that means I do speak to uh, one of the partners in the company. So um, speaking to them now, anything coming out of China, you've got to take it with a pinch of salt. So I'll just had a quick chat with him and asked him around about, you know, all these suppliers, all these case, cases coming through that are exactly the same, what's going on. Uh, and what he said is a lot of the watches which they made uh, they were the ones that gave the designs for the cases and got them made. Now, they use Logu 
uh, the factory. Uh, and it's obviously very easy for Loggy to then turn around and start manufacturing those cases uh, and then sending them out to other um, other assembly plants, uh, as I like to call them. So Steel Dive could have bought some um, and, you know, that's how it works generally. I've seen some negativity around the Heimdallah one. That's the reason that stopped me because I've seen, I'd say, I haven't seen them all, but I've seen at least two reviews where the bezel action was utterly rubbish. Um, now, dealing with Heimdallah, I have had some watches come through the post where the bezel action hasn't been the best. At one point, you know, their quality was uh, was really good um, back a few months ago. But I think, I don't know, maybe the COVID, maybe they're trying to produce things a lot quicker. Uh, it has dropped on, on uh, a few of the watches that I have had. So that's the only thing I'd say on there, that this, you know, the, there's been no issues on the bezel on the San Martin. Uh, whereas on the Heimdall, it is quite known. Uh, they've got a common fold. The bracelet obviously is... Uh, heaps and bounds better than the Heimdall one and price point it, I think there's a 10 pound difference between them two so for a tenner it's a no-brainer I'd definitely go for this uh, as I mentioned uh, at least dimensionally it is quite close to the Rolex so let's be honest the closest thing to a Rolex if you really want a Rolex and you don't want to pay Rolex money you're going to get the replicas you're going to get the super clone grades coming out of China uh, and they are shockingly good literally it takes uh you know for you to look at the watches on a microscopic level um at small you know minute details for you to actually catch that it's fake but a homage or a copage as this is i will say san martin is up there no doubt about that that's it i'm done for the review um hopefully i haven't missed anything I have got the version 3 on order, so as soon as that comes, uh, I'll be looking to review that. I've ordered, I've got five San Martin watches sitting with me at the moment, so bear with while I work through the reviews uh, and just do my testing on the watches. Uh, I did that because I really want to, you know, break down what, what San Martin's all about, if they are really that good, uh, and how far ahead are they of everybody at the moment. Uh, so stay tuned, and you'll see those reviews. I'm usually I, I put a video out every two to three days uh, so I do have a slight backlog so I expect some really good videos coming out soon like always thank you for watching please leave a comment um, in the section below if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button until next time